our collectives don't represent the realities or the possibilities of our humanity, largely they represent our depravity. They represent some of the worst potentials of our human cultures, not so much our humanity. Similarly, <clears throat> religion is what we get instead of contact with nature, which is more than religion, <laughs> much more. And, or, or contact with the, the nature of our human essence, our intellect, our souls, our spirit. And the reason that our collectives, including our religions and even our scientific collectives, don't represent the potentials of our humanity or our intelligence or even our collectivity is because they're founded in fictions. They're, they're not even half true. Uh, our political systems, like a corporation, or like corporations, have public and private faces. And the public face is the advertising face. Uh, the great guy next door who believes in you and intends on your well-being and success. And the private face is a profiteer, a uh, kind of a, a pirate, if you will. And these two faces are very severely divided so that the affectations of the public face do not invade upon the private face. And the concerns of the private face are invisible to the public face. So we have a, a politics of duplicity, and our collectives are fundamentally founded on fictions because they are not founded to represent our needs, desires, development, or well being. They're founded to fund their own survival and elaboration and particularly uh, profiteering. So, you know, the fracking company publicly talks about creating jobs and profits and the future, which is always an exciting topic for people to hear about, while privately they dump billions of gallons of incredibly toxic, long-lasting waste into the fundamental basis of the aquifers in our in this state, California. Uh, publicly, there's a wonderful spectacle of technology and uh, humans coming together to accomplish a task. Privately, we're wiping out the history of life on Earth and the future for a few pennies uh, in the present that will mostly be stacked up in the pockets of profiteers. Much of our lives exist in a context that is divided this way, where we're not even really allowed or encouraged to discover or develop our humanity. We are instead uh, rewarded for accepting very crude replacements, kind of fictional frameworks and paradigms, jobs, where we get meaningful roles is with each other in families or in groups and in communities. But in our cultures, our roles are at least half fictional and that half conflicts with the hope and the promise of our humanity. And it fundamentally conflicts with the necessities of living here on Earth in a planet that requires thriving ecologies for humans to exist. Uh, because, unfortunately, our fictional collectives, the more threatened and precious the ecological resources become, the faster they will convert them to assets. They'll simply attack everything at once 
and respond to the lawsuits that succeed. Of course, lawsuits are useless. Lawsuits can never return uh, the unthinkably ancient assets and promise and potentials of any ecology or living place or species. Uh, lawsuits are a fiction, a fictional reply to only the fictional part, the part having to do with money, of the harms done not only to the living places and the history of life on earth and its future, but to human beings. A great example is Bhopal, India, um, where DuPont poisoned and killed thousands of people, uh, producing chemistries, you know, industrial chemistries, insecticides, fertilizers, things like this. Um, what, what's happening is an invisible holocaust uh, where the fundamental roots of ecological health and necessity are being obliterated And since we have no real roles or agency in our cultures, most of us are kind of standing around wondering <clears throat> if and how we could in any way affect or interrupt this. And since we have, as I mentioned, little agency, a fictional sense of agency in our cultures, we can vote. <laughs> I mean, the entire living environment would be gone long before voting could possibly affect anything like this. The only real answer is to establish immediately intelligent, effective, and authentic human collectives in which uh, our development and exploration of our humanity is nobly and truly supported, encouraged, and rewarded. And together we can learn to forge collectives whose agency is real, whose intelligence develops itself rapidly, and his purposes are noble and true, and not duplicitous or based on profit, money, dogma, or words in books. The, the, the printed language of dead experts. These are not reasonable foundations for human collectivity. But the nature of our human potential, our intelligence, and our role in the cosmos, in nature herself, those are the foundations. Uh, foundations forged of true mutuality, rather than that which is feigned for compliance <laughs> with some paradigm that, that has, you know, one of six legs left standing. I don't know what will happen but our, our fictional collectives have to be transformed. And the wisest and most rapid way to do that would be a way that doesn't oppose them or fight them or go to war or engage in conflict much. A way that just establishes something new that is so much better that nobody will want to participate in anything else eventually. This at least is my vision or part of my hope.